Our next speaker is Laitan Awei, and he's coming to us from Nigeria. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Laitan Awei, and I'll be presenting on the genetic interrelationships between Zika, dengue, chikungunya, and yellow fever virus strains. So what are these organisms? They are arboviruses, meaning that they are transmitted by mosquitoes, and the main vector that transmits these viruses are the Aedes mosquitoes. Uh, they all share the same infection mechanism, and uh, for some of these viruses, they belong to the virus family called Flaviviridae, you know, the Zika virus, yellow fever virus, and the dengue virus. So they are flaviviruses. But the chikungunya virus is an alpha virus belonging to the virus family, alpha viridae. The source of Zika virus is from the blood of an experimental forest sentinel resource monkey in Uganda in 1947. And the dengue's first case on public record was in 1950 in the Philippines and Thailand. Zika is characterized by fever, rash, red eyes, but it is also linked to microcephaly babies in newborns based on the surge following the Zika virus outbreak in Brazil a year ago, as well as the guillain bear syndrome, which is when the immune system of a human starts attacking the nervous system of the same person, so the person ends up becoming more like a vegetable, loses sensors for the rest of the person's life. So we see that the Zika virus has a way of um, causing life-threatening um, symptoms. So the 2015 Zika outbreak, and this picture is based on um, reports from the Pacific Disaster Center. Currently, as at the 30th of June this year, Zika has caused over 11 deaths and then over 463,000 cases so far. The major problem with Zika is Zika in pregnancy because of the association with microcephaly. That's the um, small development of the brain and the child is born with um, um, brain problems. And then sexual transmission is also possible in Zika. So I have a table here, but it's a little bit rough. Just pardon me. Also from the Pacific Disaster Center, um, showing the cumulative locally acquired Zika cases by country in the Americas as at the 30th of June this year. Now, we have just four of those countries where Zika has led to, to deaths. Puerto Rico, Suriname, Honduras, and um, Brazil. Okay, so this is for the United States as at the, the 13th of July this year. Um, this is like an overview from CDC of the locally acquired Zika cases in the state. So um, the ones in the dark green are the ones where we have more than seven cases. And speaking recently with someone, I realized that in Utah, I think two weeks ago, there was an announcement of Zika confirmed also um, in a man who traveled and then brought back the disease to the country. So apparently so far, there has not been a case of Zika being transmitted locally um, in the States. It's mostly people that traveled and brought the virus back, got tested, and became positive. This gives us like an overview also of Zika cases in the States. The locally acquired mosquito-borne cases reported is zero, meaning that Zika might not, at least as at today, might not be endemic in the States. The travel-associated cases are reported as 1,305, and the laboratory acquired cases reported one. Because at times, while scientists are testing in the lab, they could accidentally get infected. 
So that probably will be the case for the laboratory acquired case. Sexually transmitted, 14, the guillain bear syndrome, five. So the US territories, the other countries that are nearby, have almost 3,000 locally acquired cases. The travel associated cases reported 11. Now, the vector for um, Zika virus is the Aedes mosquito. The Aedes mosquito, we have um, Aedes aegypti, Aedes al albobictus. The Aedes mosquito is the vector that transmits Zika. So this mosquito goes to an infected person, feeds on the blood of the infected person, and then gets the virus, then goes to another person to bite, and then transmits the virus to the new person. So this is the major reason why Zika virus or any of the other viruses in the same that we are comparing gets transmitted. And the photo credit is cockyspest.com. Um, the Aedes mosquito map we have here um, countries that have the Aedes mosquito uh, in those countries where there is a possibility that Zika might become endemic. The Zika virus disease might become endemic in those countries. The countries where you have the, dark, the darkest green are the ones that have the two species of the Aedes mosquito. So this just gives us more like an overview of, you know, trying to see the possibilities of Zika becoming endemic in a country or not. Zika is also um, the virus, the Aedes mosquitoes are also in Nigeria, where I come from. So apparently, um, there's a possibility that they can become, we can have um, the epidemic of Zika virus in Nigeria as well. Okay, so we have the, the Zika virion. Um, so, so we are showing here the three structural proteins in Zika virus, the E dimer, the M protein, the C protein. And that shows the genomic RNA for Zika. And this also shows us the Zika genome. And the photo credit is viral zone. So the strains we are comparing, uh, we are looking at the genomes for most of these viruses are about 11,000 base pairs. That's the nucleotide sequence, the full length DNA sequences. So the Zika virus, 11, approximately 11,000 um, base pairs. Um, the yellow fever virus, approximately 11,000 base pairs. The dengue virus is approximately 11,000 base pairs. And the chikungunya is approximately 12,000 base pairs. Now, previous findings. Um, Zika virus outbreak epidemic occurred on the Yap Island Federated States of Micronesia in 2007. And although the virus has been known to circulate in both Africa and Asia since at least the 1950s, little is known about the relationships between geographically distinct virus strains. So, because the infection in humans produces an illness clinically similar to dengue fever and many other tropical infectious diseases, it is likely greatly misdiagnosed and underreported. Dengue fever was believed to be caused by four serotypes dengue 1, dengue 2, dengue 3, dengue 4. But in October 2013, a fifth serotype has been isolated, which unlike the other four serotypes, uh, follows the sylvatic cycle, meaning that the virus, the uh, dengue five serotype, follows most of its lifespan cycling between wild animals and vector. And incidentally, once in a while, it could happen in humans, but then it's not like the dengue one to four. Now, um, a Major recent finding has been uh, done as well last month by George Savides et al. Um, I think at the lab led by Abraham Elbras. Now, they have been working on some other viruses 
in the past. 2009, they worked on the flu virus and discovered this IFITM3 protein in humans that can inhibit and block Zika virus from infecting human and mouse cells. For some um, humans, they might not have as much of this protein, but when the protein is sufficient enough in a human, it is possible for that protein, you know, to swallow up or quarantine the virus, thereby stopping infection and also preventing the virus from penetrating into neighboring cells. So the next step here is to test these findings in mice that are IFITM3 deficient to see whether these animals are more susceptible to the effects of Zika virus infection. So IFITM3 has a big impact on blocking many emerging viruses such as the dengue, Zika, and Ebola virus. So but the question is, how is this protein inhibiting these viruses? So following the Zika uh, outbreak last year, our goal was to take nucleotide sequences um, publicly available, and then for dengue, yellow fever, chikungunya, and Zika virus, and then find out if you can use these sequences to identify how related these species transmitted by the Aedes um, mosquito, uh, and then probably find out insights into the pathogenesis of Zika. Now, we found out that the Zika strains carry derived mutations that put them in a group with chikungunya, yellow fever, and chikungunya and yellow fever viruses, though chikungunya and yellow fever are more closely related to each other than to Zika. Now, the closest relative to the Zika strain um, is the Dengue 2 serotype. So we infer possible genetic changes in Zika and that there might be genetic variations that have happened within the course of the outbreak event or within individuals, and this could be confirmed experimentally. So if the virus incurs a mutation, could this facilitate transmission by another vector? Those are still unanswered questions. Now, dengue is an outgroup to all three viral strains. That's chikungunya, yellow fever, and the Zika virus. And the dengue virus is extremely diverse with five serotypes, and even the serotypes are divergent themselves. So dengue two is closer to Zika than dengue one, and then dengue three and four are closely related to each other. You can see that in the, the chart. Now a few more samples are needed before being able to speculate on the implication of our results. And these are important points to put in perspective, to develop tools or drugs to fight the Zika virus. And uh, we show a phylogram representing the relationships among the strains. And just to um, reemphasize that the yellow fever and the chikungunya virus are more closely related, but then the Zika strains carry a derived mutation that put them in the same group with yellow fever and chikungunya. And the dengue 2 seems to be closer to Zika virus. And we see a lot of divergence in the dengue species. So this is, okay, dengue 5 was not included in the analysis because, like I mentioned earlier, it follows the silvatic cycle unlike the other serotypes that follow the human cycle. I'd like to thank, um, Dr. Shegun Fatumo from the Wellcome Trust Sangha Institute, um, Dr. Angela Makolu from the University of Ibadan, and Dr. Lubenga Uluagbemi from the University of Kogi State University, as well as TAGC Population Evolutionary and Genetic um, Conference organizers. Thank you for your attention, and I'd like to take questions.